So let's get started with an explanation of conventional RTOS technology. To begin with, let's think about why RTOS is necessary in the first place. So to understand why RTOS might be needed, let's consider asynchronous serial communication transmission software. Asynchronous serial communication is an incredibly simple style of communication using what is called RS-232C. To begin with, the transmission rate between the sender and receiver is fixed from the start. When no data is being transferred, one is sent, like you see here. When data starts being sent, first the one bit interval becomes zero, as here. This is called the start bit. Afterward, eight bits of data are sent. So how should receive software be built? First, let's set it up so that when the start bit is detected, an interrupt occurs. Then, when this interrupt occurs, the receive software is activated. As a result, when the receive software is activated, it waits the length of the start bit and then starts sampling the data. Then it waits for another one bit of time and samples again. This repeats a total of eight times, allowing for reception of eight bits of data. Let's write this out in a flowchart. The software is activated through an interrupt. It waits the length of the start bit, receives the data, and after this is repeated eight times, it finishes. This is an extremely simple program. Now, what if we have two serial communication ports? When a start bit like this arrives, it causes an interrupt, and the program runs the same as before. When it has received four bits, it causes the other port to start receiving, so another receive program starts running. While this one waits the length of one bit, the other port must read the data. With just two ports, the situation has become more complex. So what happens when we increase to three or more ports? It's painful even to think about it. RTOS offers a simple solution to this problem. You can use the services offered by RTOS to create received software for each port. Software modules using RTOS services like this are called tasks. The RTOS also manages these tasks, activating and suspending them as needed. More specifically, this is how they are used. To begin with, the RTOS is here. On this side, we have the receive software on port 1, as discussed earlier. And on this side, we will place the receive software for port 2. They won't run like this, so we need to adjust the receive software like so. The interrupt enters the RTOS. If port 1 creates the interrupt, then the RTOS activates receive task 1. After this, the receive software is supposed to wait for one bit of time, but instead of going into a loop, it sends a request to the RTOS asking to be reactivated after one bit of time. We refer to this as a system call. More specifically, it is invoking a delay system call with the argument of one bit of time to the RTOS. When the RTOS gets this system call, after the designated time, it will reactivate receive task 1. The RTOS can operate freely until it's time to activate that task again. In other words, the RTOS enables execution of other tasks during that wait time. After the designated time has elapsed, the RTOS reactivates receive task 1. Receive task 1 receives the data, and then it invokes the delay system call once more to wait for one bit of time. This is repeated eight times. 
So we can register the same software as a task on port 2, and it will activate as needed whenever an interrupt occurs. As you can see, even if interrupts occur at about the same time, Receive Task 1 and Receive Task 2 can run simultaneously in alternation with each other. Also, you can see how the number of tasks increases in correspondence with the increase in number of ports. This is how it looks if we draw it out on a timeline. The RTOS can run multiple tasks at the same time, because while one task is delayed for a given time, it can freely and simultaneously activate other tasks. One of RTOS's most important roles is to offer the ability to operate multiple tasks between tasks as needed. What's more, it offers services to each task through system calls. We just introduced the delay system call here, but the RTOS can provide many other functions through system calls. As you can see, using RTOS facilitates software modularization. In addition, you can use the services RTOS offers in software development, and using these software modules as components in your RTOS allows easy reusability of your modules. What's more, the simple structure of tasks themselves helps improve overall reliability since you can use system calls to run complex functions as tasks, and the RTOS handles task switching and other complex functions. This helps improve software development productivity. These are the key benefits of using RTOS. Finally, I'd like to tell you about Renesis Electronics' original technology, Hardware Real-Time OS which implements RTOS completely in hardware. This technology greatly minimizes overhead while guaranteeing worst case interrupt latency. Hardware RTOS offers the extremely high real-time performance required by embedded systems. For more details, please see our website.